there's something happening on our perimeter. An unidentified spaceship has penetrated our defenses. Flanagan, Meyer. What's going on? This is Unit P of Reconnaissance. Reporting the sighting of an alien vessel, a flying saucer. They're maintaining full radio silence. They don't reply to any of our signals. The velocity of their ship is much superior to my craft. I'm sending Johnson out after it and a new hunter. That's the best we can do, sir. Let's just hope he manages to catch it. You can try to force it to land, but if they won't, he should return to his launching module. It's possible their intentions are hostile. An indigenous space vehicle of a primitive, chemically propelled design is attempting to force us to reduce velocity. Destroy it. Insert central computer link into defense system circuits. Hurry. Link inserted. Space Hunter A-74 Beta struck and disintegrated by a destructive ray impossible to identify. Alien vessel has passed outer belt perimeter defenses and is now rapidly approaching automatic inner defense ring of Earth. Propellant energy source not yet identified. Automatic system on emergency in-tracking and aiming phase. Alien vessel now entering K Sector 5. In 10 seconds, it will be in range of atomic cannon. Man meets an alien race at last and greets them by disintegrating their vessel. Atomic cannon crossfire now underway. The object has been struck. Commander Barr. Quiet, Hollywood. You are witnessing mankind's first contact with an alien race. Yes. And I'm ready to shake their hands. Alien vessel on damage. What? And proceeding rapidly direction Earth. Atomic cannons ineffectual. Impossible. This is red emergency all sectors. Zeta-3 ready to open up. At that velocity, they're already beyond section Zeta-3 and they'll be drawing within range of our hyper-radar any minute now, and the Earth-based artillery. Approaching SOV-3, atmosphere rich in oxygen, breathable with little discomfort, widespread traces of pollution due to chemical combustion and nuclear wastes. Analysis of magnetic and heat radiation reveals technological level approximately equivalent to the Aztec culture 18 centuries ago. Bionic radiation analysis reveals planet population to be approximately 10 billion units. Infrared scanners show that almost all industrial and residential structures are below ground or on the seabed. This appears to be due to the necessity of freeing the surface for agricultural use. There are, in addition, vast areas of both land and sea dedicated to breeding and raising lower forms of life to serve as nutriment for the higher forms. So three is even better than I thought it was when I bought it. It seems they want to show a force. It would be extremely impolite of me to disappoint them. Continuing to destroy all our military bases. After they knocked out London, they started on Accra. There are no survivors at Adelaide. And Tokyo Sub says the Okinawa base is just a junkyard. The laboratories have nearly finished examining all the available data. But the news has leaked out. I can't hold off the reporters much longer. In spite of the lack of official information, the papers are already talking about an invasion. It'll take a miracle to save us now. If anyone can work miracles, Professor Mori can. Professor Mori? Who's he? Mori is a truly exceptional scientist. 
He has a degree of intelligence that puts him about two centuries ahead of everyone else. Why isn't he working with us? Because he's too independent, stubborn, and undisciplined. He won't accept any kind of authority. But in a situation like this, he's the only person who can do anything. Why not get in touch with him? The problem is that my relationship with the professor could not be described as ideal. The last time I asked for his help, he was so difficult to get along with, I had to arrest him. He can't have liked that. Quite. At the moment, the only person he might listen to is a young lieutenant, Oliver Carrera. Ah, Hollywood. That fellow who acts as if he were a superstar in a TV series called Fighting Hero of the Galaxy. Him, the only one who could possibly help. Holly spends most of his spare time at the professor's. As a young niece, he's playing up to. Hmm. Professor Morey lives at the ecology laboratory on the cereal range and passes the time turning out inventions that are incredible. Flanagan, I can't hold these reporters back anymore. Don't worry. I'll take care of that howling mob. You have to go on a very important mission. Interium. The alien craft is protected with an armor of pure Interium. That's impossible. What makes it impossible, dear? Just because we on Earth only have a kilo of Interium? But we know nothing about conditions prevailing on the alien's galaxy. Earth has a lot of iron, and their planet might be made of Indirium. But, Uncle, Indirium is practically indestructible. And their spaceship is proved. Our nuclear artillery didn't even scratch the surface. Evidently, the enemy craft has traveled from a far corner of the universe over a vast distance in order to arrive here. It's not surprising they managed to swat down that ridiculous insect of a space hunter that the command post sent to greet them. Oh, Uncle, you really shouldn't laugh like that. Our planet may be in very serious danger. Oh, I'm not laughing about it at all, Irene. My dear, these aliens have several centuries advantage over us. They travel out of space, through the galaxies, while we are unable to get any farther than the planets of our own sun. They possess an untold quantity of Indirium. And in all probability, consider us savages. Hardly worth bothering about. Technologically, they may be ahead of us, but I think that... Just a minute. I'm sorry. They're barbarians. They don't place any sort of value on human life. But you're forgetting how the white man behaved towards the Negro and the American Indian. It's the most powerful race which makes the decision as to who's civilized and who's not. And I'm afraid we'll have to accept our inferiority and submit to the inevitable. Interior. I never would have imagined that I'd have to go back to my research on Interior. My name is Oliver, in case you forgot. Uh, no, darling. Please excuse me. I mustn't be informal. This visit is official. Since the visiting hero is so anxious to maintain his formality, I suppose there's no use offering him a drink. Good Lord. What's that? It's an old house robot that Uncle built ages ago. It had a short circuit in its electronic brain and it acts a little peculiar. Why don't you fix it, Uncle? Oh, I could never find the time. Anyway, I've forgotten how it works. <laughs> he may not speak very distinctly, but he's a superb bartender. Professor Morey, we're faced with disaster. Three of our bases are already in ruins and we... we're completely helpless. No doubt you've heard the latest news bulletin. According to the official news, the situation is under control. What do you want with me? Commander Barr has entrusted me with the most oh, important mission. Oh, I know, I know that. You already said your visit was official. So I can easily imagine what kind of heroic mission Commander Barr has entrusted you with. To persuade that old fool Maury. <laughs> to help him out. 
I must say your Commander Barr certainly has a nerve. After putting my uncle in prison, he still thinks he's entitled to ask his help. Yes. But the whole point of the matter is that there's no way I can avoid giving you the assistance you need since I have to live on this earth myself, as does my charming niece. I'll, I'll do what I can. can. But on, on my conditions, conditions only. No conditions, Maury. I'm not authorized to agree to conditions of any type. You can do whatever you want, but don't expect any support officially. If anyone gets burned, I'd rather that anyone was you, naturally. I don't hesitate to admit preferring your discomfort to my own. You've had a taste of it already, Bar. It was an unavoidable necessity, and you know it. Now, all you have to do is to tell me if you're going to help us, or if we'll have to surrender. Hmm. That means he'll help us. Holly's done a good job. I don't know how he manages, but he does. I burn my fingers. And he warms his hands. I don't understand. Was there some kind of trouble between you and the commander? Oh, it's a long story. I'll tell you one of these days. It also concerns a couple of friends of mine. Sean and Bridget. Among the greatest chemists living. Why haven't you ever mentioned they're being friends of yours? I believe they're in the penitentiary at Moon Space. Quite. Now somebody will have to get them out of the penitentiary. And I know just the person to do it. Maybe, uh, don't look at me, sir. I'd have to get an authorization, and I don't think Commander Barr I would... must have them. At Base GA, they've managed to discover that the alien vessel is made entirely of enderium. That's supposed to be a secret. Are you surprised that I know? Frankly, I'm astonished that the base managed to discover it, too. And only Sean and Bridget could possibly succeed in inventing an entirely new substance that could perforate enderium, but the two of them are in the penitentiary. Apparently, it's a vicious circle. It's impossible to get out of it. Not necessarily. Say a certain lieutenant were to join forces with a person I know who's very clever with locked doors. The two of you could free them easily. But an act such as that is strictly against the law. Assisting criminals to get out? No, never. That would mean betraying my duty as a soldier. And that you can't expect of an honest man. No, no. And I can't force you. What I expect is that you would volunteer to handle it. But that's ridiculous. You must be joking. I, I couldn't possibly... Of course I'll do it. Professor, I volunteered to handle it. You've done it again. It's very unfair of you. <laughs> I must have shown it Bridget. And Dirk and Norman. And as for them, you'll have to track them down for me, won't you? change sooner or later. Pay up. Come on. I'm afraid you really were very unlucky. The law of probability was certainly on your side. <laughs> oh, Dirk.
I just don't understand it. I had all the winning numbers, but she won. Huh. Very lucky girl. You know, I never thought I was going to win, Laramie. Dirk huh? Laramie, you brought me luck. Hey, listen, you. Can't you see I'm busy? You're Dirk Laramie, aren't you? The gambler who hypnotizes his opponents. Look, I'm busy. Let's talk about it later. Hey, boy, this is Dirk Laramie, the guy who can see through cards. I think he ought to give back the money he won off us. That's him. Hey, there. Just a moment, darling. You gonna hand over that cash to us? Here. Oh. <laughs> You were here too, huh? I'll bet you were hitting me harder than the others. <laughs> no, I'm afraid I didn't have that pleasure. But I did enjoy the performance. Mmm. <sighs> Tonight at the usual place. She won't keep the appointment. A couple of guardians caught her just as she was trying to slip quietly away, unfortunately. <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, I certainly didn't drop in to say hello. It was my uncle who asked me to look for you. And I'm afraid there was no way I could refuse. He wants to have a talk with you immediately. It's urgent. Oh. He does. He wants to see me. Look. He said for you to come right over to his place without wasting a moment. <laughs> does he think I'm going to come running every time he snaps his fingers, like that little toy soldier of yours? Don't be like that. This thing is very important. Oh. I'm sure it's extremely important. Irene. You used to kiss a lot better. It's the fall of that soldier, Holly. Dirk, how many days have you been in here? Oh, two, three, I don't know. Then you know nothing about what's happening in the world. Why? What's happening? <laughs> they assassinated another president? Why not come and see? Mm -hmm. I guess I should. Won't you sit down? Uh, Jeeves? He's asking you if you like ice and soda in your whiskey. <laughs> no, thank you. I prefer it neat. I take it Irene has already told you everything. Not exactly. I began explaining one or two things. Apparently, it was more important to find some guy called Norman. If you want me to go to the penitentiary at Moon Space, I must have a spacecraft. Yes. Fortunately, it happens that there is a junior officer here on the station who is an old friend of ours. 
Oliver Carrera, <laughs> known as Hollywood. Oh. And is he willing to help out? Mm. I've already awakened his interest in the operation. All you have to do is prevent him from changing his mind. With your unusual talent, I'm sure you will have no difficulty gaining his cooperation in borrowing one of the Navy's vessels for our use. Do you follow me? Hmm? I sure do. It's just like old times. <laughs> and when your mission is finished, and you've returned the spacecraft to the base, Oliver won't remember anything. Always assuming that we managed to get away with Sean and Bridget. Oh, you'll make it all right. <laughs> I have every confidence. I know you, Dirk. You know, Professor, I missed you. <laughs> Turn one into one on the slave pickup operation in the subtropical continent. Yes, sir. 1,600 dark-skinned units of various age groups have been collected. All damaged or physically unsuitable elements have been destroyed, leaving a sample group of 1,000 strong, healthy individuals. This group has had two hours in Zeta chamber to destroy all pathogenic bacteria. They are now undergoing suspended animation processing prior to stowage in hold six, container four. Hey, Holly. Holly. Hey, Holly. I am Lieutenant Oliver J. Carrera. You see the star? It's a medal for galactic bravery. Oh, I trust the lieutenant will accept my apologies. My name is Dirk Gordon Laramie the third. Dirk Laramie? I think we've already met. Oh, <laughs> you have a very good memory. Listen, Holly. Oh, I'm sorry. I have something important to tell you. It's from the professor. But how did you manage to get in? Civilians aren't allowed on the base. Uh, Better get out. No, wait. Just a minute, Lieutenant. Till you've heard my message. It's from, uh... The old man, get it? He sent me. What old man? Ah. You don't remember? Professor Maury. Maury? What does he want from me? He said for you to help me. So they'd lend us something. Lend? Lend what? A spaceship. I just need it for a day or two, and when we've finished using it, you can give it back. Huh? You're the only person that can help us. And Professor Morey said he was certain you could do it. You're out of your minds. Both of you. I'm handing you over to the guard. No, wait a minute, Lieutenant. Don't do anything you might live to regret. Think of Irene. Irene? Yes, Irene. I have to think of my duty. Duty comes before anything else. That's right. Duty first. And stealing is against my principles as a soldier. No one can force me to. To. Uh, uh, no one wants to force you. I'm waiting for you to volunteer. Of course. Of course. If it's what the professor wants, I'll gladly volunteer. Come on. Follow me. Urgent mission. I must lift off at once. 
Present your permit. And has this civilian with you got a base pass? Of course he has. Show him your pass. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Galactic hero. Who's that idiot blasting off without flight clearance? I don't know. There aren't any scheduled flights today. Where to? Moon space. The Alcatraz of the heavens. There are two birds in that gilded cage that we have to set free. Looking that bridge of land in, huh? <laughs> too high.
Have you had enough? I've had enough. Those are the brakes. Just luck. Too much for me. Just too easy. But how could you know that I was bluffing? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I have all the winning numbers now except one. So why go on? What's the point? You might as well give in graciously and come to bed. Not yet. You still haven't won. Everything depends on the final game. If I lose, you get all the money and the pleasure of a night with me. But if I win, you lose everything. The money and my body. Quite right. Let's play another one. It's a matter of purely academic interest to us now. What counts is that it really did happen, and now we have to do something. Flanagan, contact all observation satellites and bases and have them transmit any pictures they've managed to get of this UFO immediately. Yes, sir. Holly. Yes, sir. I want you to get me a spectrograph analysis from the chief of the observatory. Yes, sir. I need to know the substance this spacecraft is composed of and why it was resistant to our nuclear cannon attack. Yes, sir. We're in serious trouble. Perhaps the computer could make an analysis from the existing data. There's just a faint hope it can. At least in terms of probable choices, because it's absolutely vital to know immediately the defense systems used on the UFO. I'll find out, Commander. Ladies and gentlemen, the auction is now open. And to begin the sale, Troll, a seventh category planet with an unbreathable atmosphere, surrounded by asteroids bearing rich deposits of valuable minerals. Sun, Class G. I bid one million credits. A million credits. Lord Sin of Sastra bids one million credits for this valuable property with its immense natural resources. Do I hear a better offer? Gone to Sin of Sastria for one million credits. The next item on offer is Horvath IV, a third category planet, abounding in surface lichens and other forms of plant life on the seabed. Two million credits. Three million. Five million. Lord Gar of Torkoal bids five million credits. Do I hear a higher bid? Going, going. Gone to Gar of Tokel for five million credits. Congratulations, Lord Gar, you've got a bargain there. Life is most rare in the universe. But I've been reliably informed that today they're auctioning a small planet on the edge of the galaxy. With humans on it. Farkas, 15. Rich in Talium. Homo sapiens. Slaves. Millions of slaves just waiting to have their thoughts erased. Clearly by some person who has sufficient ships to transport them. Will no one offer two million credits? Very well. The planet is withdrawn from the sale. You can sell some to me. I'll pay a thousand credits each. It's a deal. Provided Gore of Tarkal doesn't succeed in outbidding us, with the aid of the Aptoneus. And now, Lords of the Galaxy, the main item of today's sale, Sol 3. It has rarely been my privilege to put such a remarkable world on the block. It is a third category planet belonging to a Class B sun. It's known as Earth. Six million. Twelve million credits. Sol 3 is immensely rich in every type of life, animal, bacterial and plant, all in various stages of evolution. The gravity factor is 1.3, the atmosphere breathable. But in addition to all this, it is teeming with the rarest of all life forms. Humans. 20 million credits. I bid 30 million. 32 million. 50 million. 50 million credits for Sol 3. Will anyone go higher? 60 million. You again? Do I hear a higher bid?
70 million. 70 million for Why don't trade. you go to 100 Do I million? I can get it. 100 million. Kess of Kobo has bid 100 million credits. Do I hear a higher offer? Going for 100 million credits. To Kess of Kobo for 100 million credits. Slaves, you can place an order at my house during the next rota. But do not delay. I shall depart for Sol 3 on the first Aldis of Athens. way to do it. I think I know what it is. It's a terrible bore being under the freeze ray for a warm-hearted girl. I know how to be nice. To a man I like. I can make the right person feel all kinds of pleasures and thrills. And you are the kind of person I go for. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of waiting, unable to even move, but dying for a man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not from the department. I've just had to declare a full-scale emergency to stifle a breakout. Naturally, it's always the same two detainees who ruin things. That damn Bridget and Sean. Ah! Uh, blast them. I ruined the day I ever let them into my penitentiary. They've tried to escape four times. They caused nothing but trouble. But I can tell you they're going to be thoroughly sorry. Because I shall transfer the two of them to a prison asteroid. And they can rot in solitary confinement. But of course, this is of no interest to you. It's just my problem. And I fear I've neglected to ask you, how can I be of assistance? Uh, that is to say, what is uh, <clears throat> the reason for your visit? <clears throat> I'll come right to the point.
Two gentlemen have come all the way here just for you. I'd like to introduce you. Uh, I think we can skip the introduction. Naturally, naturally. To continue, I propose that we reward the good conduct and excellent behavior that has made your model to all the prisoners on Moon Space. And so I intend to. I intend to. I intend to. to shorten your sentences by the remaining 78 years and release you in the custody of these two gentlemen who will escort you back to Earth. It was crazy of you, Irene, to bet all that money on me, but I sure am glad to see you again. It must be years since the last time we met. I knew you'd win the fight. My uncle says nobody can fight like you can. Whenever anybody talks about fighting, he always mentions you. He needs your help, Norman. And we're... I'm afraid that we're... all going to be needing a lot of help because of that flying saucer. But I heard the news report about it. They said the situation was completely under control by now. It's not true. That's why Uncle is reforming the old team. And of course, that includes you. If the professor needs me, that's okay. But I want to bring along a couple of friends. They could be very useful. understand. There isn't a living soul around here. But I never mentioned living souls, Irene. Hey, look in that pile of junk. That's one of them. Come on.
made me waste nearly five hours over this. Uncle will be furious. Take it easy, Irene. You'll soon see that your five hours haven't been wasted. Okay, now, replace the power unit. You take micro batteries, too. Down here. There, perfect. Say something, Tilt. Damn you, Norman, you interfering, warm-blooded animal. Who authorized you to reactivate me? Why can't two poor robots commit suicide in peace without some meddling human recharging their circuits? Tilly and I wanted to put an end to it all because... Now, let me see. What was it exactly? Anyway, you should have kept out of it. What's that noise? Ah, oh, why, it's her! Starting the journey to the eternal nothing. Hurry, there's not a minute to lose. If you don't want me to go to pieces again, you must save her. Quick, before her tender tin limbs are crushed like kitchen foil in that cruel machine. Oh, Tilly. My precious Tilly. He won't make it in time. Tilly. Darling, light of my transistors. Tilly, sweet little Tilly. Thank heaven he made it in time. She's beautiful, isn't she? Oh, yes. Yeah. She's really beautiful. We're engaged, beautiful. you know. We love each other deeply. <coughs> Quick, Norman. Get the trash off her. It's such an indignity for her, mixing with junk from such low-class machines. Hurry! Hurry! No doubt you came provided with fresh micro batteries for her, too. Uh-huh. Tilly, my treasure. Are you all right? Tilly, my dear, is that you? Are we in robot heaven? I expected something different. No, Tilly, we're not dead. We've been reactivated. Oh, darling, I wondered if I'd ever see you again. I'm sorry our suicide pact was a failure. It was such a romantic idea, and I know how hard you tried to make it work. I don't mind, Tilt. One can't have everything in life. By the way, Tilly, I must have a splintered crystal in my memory bank. I can't remember why we made a suicide pact. You can't remember? Oh, Tilt, how can you be so unfeeling? It was because... Let me see. It was because we decided to end it all. Yes, but why? Why? Oh, dear. I can't remember either. And you really think that these two funny little robots can actually be of some use to her? Don't judge them by appearances. They're full of surprises. Tilt what's got me out of a very tricky situation. He's able to project an energy field around his plating so that moving objects pass through without touching. These two units were designed as one of a series of far-out experiments to see if they could create robots with human emotions. They were only partially successful. However, there are several areas where they produce quite unexpected results. Now I'll demonstrate for you how Tilt can cope with any adversary. It's extraordinary. I'll try to hit him with this pole. Just watch. Hey, Tilt! What is it? Can't you see I'm busy? On guard! Are you crazy? No, it's all right. Just kidding. Kidding, he calls it. Tilly, where are you going? Wait! The acceleration is so rapid, it appears to vanish. And they can evidently reach a velocity of several parsecs. All these clips we've been looking at were collected by our space observatories. And just before Earth fall, the saucer disappeared from our radar, so they must be using a scrambler. Commander, the alien vessel has landed near Hiroshima and captured over 800 people. This is the 24th raid they've carried out. Starting with those farmers in United Africa, then the Arabs, the Russians, and now the Japanese. If word of this gets out, we'll have panic over the entire planet. Lloyd, get working on the computer and start to prepare an accurate map of all the places the alien vessel has landed. Then see if you can determine any logic on the basis of which the aliens chose those places. And discover their next probable objective. I'll try, sir. <laughs> 
If we succeed, I have decided to prepare an atomic ambush for the aliens. Maybe we wanted to die because we felt old and out of date. Oh, no. 130 isn't old for a robot. And we're still very spry and shiny. I think it was because I wanted to have children. Great integrated circuits. What's that thing? Look, Tilly, a prehistoric cave robot. I've never seen anything so ugly. I say creatures like this shouldn't be allowed to run around loose. They ought to be kept in zoos. Now, Tilly, that's just prejudice. He has as much right to activate as we have, even if his skin is a different color. The situation is desperate. The government consists of men who are completely unimaginative. So if we want the world to survive, we have to do the job ourselves. Our chief hope lies in Sean and Bridget. They've been studying the structure of Indirium for many years, but their reasons for doing so are highly personal. <laughs> they couldn't properly be defined as scientific. <laughs> as far as that goes, we had some help from a boxer by the name of Norman and a gambler called Dirk Laramie, both of whom are now playing innocent. My allusion was to the case of the 128 tons of synthetic gold, a quantity which could easily have destroyed the economic equilibrium of the entire world, had it ever reached the open market. 128 tons of synthetic gold? 128 tons, that's right. The scandal didn't die down for years, but unfortunately I had no choice but to withdraw from politics. Now, just a minute, Professor. We weren't only thinking of ourselves, you know. We planned things so that our friends would also uh, get in trouble with you. <laughs> That's eh? all water under the bridge. What counts is that our whole team has been reformed once more. And now, let's get back to the Indirium. How far did you get with your research? We completed the analysis of its molecular structure. If we'd had a few more months, we would have been able to synthesize it under laboratory conditions. That's excellent. Now you have to continue. You must find a weak point in the molecular structure of Indirium that will lead to its disintegration and destruction. Do you think you can do it? Well, we can always try. Just tell me what equipment you need, and you can start work right away. Well, we can use your old laboratory, but there's one essential item that you haven't got. Hmm? A few grams of Indirium. If that's all you need, there's no problem. This container holds pure Indirium. You can imagine how difficult it was to come by. Then we're all set. Professor, Go. what are the rest of us supposed to For do? For the moment, your duty is to ensure the safety of Sean and Bridget. You didn't need space pilots like us to do that. Well, of course not. But you can't really go into action until we have a suitable weapon. Our space fleet has already tried using conventional weapons against these aliens, atomic cannons, lasers, and so on, but they've been quite useless. At the moment, we are in the same condition as the ignorant savage who tries to attack a nuclear tank with a bow and arrow. Send a message to Cobra to accelerate the preparation of cargo vessels. At the rate we're going, we'll soon have goods to fill at least 10. Yes, sir. Check the surrounding area on the monitor to see if there's any activity on the part of the indigenous troops. Instruction followed. What's that? I just felt a contact with an alien brain. A very powerful one. Strange, it's the first time that it's happened on this planet. Grandpa, 
I wanted to die because you were getting too friendly with that speak your weight machine. Isn't that just like a woman? Now, don't pull that macho stuff with me, you male chauvinist robot. I didn't mean it like that. It's just that if you get jealous every time I wink at a cute calculator... Who said anything about jealousy? It's a question of robot dignity. Have it your way, but let's not argue about it. I'm not it. arguing. You're the one who's arguing. Careful you don't make those holes too deep. Otherwise, the electromagnetic discharge won't be violent enough. I've written a poem for you. Want to hear it? It's called Passion in a Printed Circuit. activities. They've stopped taking prisoners after Japan. It could mean they've run out of space. And they've decided to return to their own planet. Unfortunately, it's a most probable hypothesis. Because in all likelihood, they will return in greater force. And we are still defenseless. There's absolutely nothing we can do to stop them. Sean and Bridget are continuing with their experiments. But they haven't had any positive results. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm going to take some food to the boys outside. <laughs> they must be starving. Be sure to give them an equal ration. Oh, no, you know Holly. He'd never dream of accepting preferential treatment over the others. I was really thinking more of Dirk. Would he accept it? <laughs> Get it through your head, Uncle. Between Dirk and me, it's all over. Jeez, come and give me a hand. probably got an overloaded imagination circuit. A bomb, hurry. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> That's me, you fool, to him. Ah, yes, him. Oui, oui, mon général. Have you guys gone crazy? If we had the time, I'd haul you before a court-martial. Oh, Quiet. Didn't you hear that noise? It sounded like a scream. Perhaps it was her brain I felt that contact with. But there is no way to tell until she regains consciousness. Go and capture the others. Stroll in the woods is very romantic, but I wish you'd stroll a little faster. Come on. Why don't we carve our names on a tree in a heart? 
No, we can't do that because a tree is a living thing, and the law of robotics won't let robots damage living things. We can only damage each other. Like the way you hurt me by flirting with that automatic shoe polisher. Me? With a slot machine? Never. Shh, what's that? Someone's coming. Tilt, I'm frightened. They must be the aliens. Cut out your anxiety circuits and keep calm. I'll protect you. Oh, Tilt. didn't even look at us. There must be some reason. I'll process the data on my probability computer. We better warn the others. Come on. Yes, you're right. Let's go. They're here. They're here. Who's here? Who do you mean, Tilly? The extraterrestrials. You don't mean the aliens. Yes, we just saw them in the woods, coming this way. <laughs> Quick, Tilly. You better go and warn the others. Tell them Tilly and I are waiting back here. I'm on my way. Open fire when I give you the order. The hero is taking command of the operation. Forward, men. Fire! very long. Listen, you two, go and warn the professor. Okay. Come on, Tilly. Fall back. Quick, to the house. Professor, the alien invaders are overwhelming our defending forces. I'm aware of it. Tally wants to know what they should do. I think you'd better warn Sean and Bridget. searching again. And it's not the girl. It's a brain of great intelligence. The electro bombs.
bombs hardly even slow them down. are nearly invulnerable. Yeah, but with this sword, I was able to knock out eight. That means we finally got a weapon we can fight them with. Everyone take these pills. It's an interesting device, this sword. I wonder what principle... to capture humans. You see, they're not even aware of us. We're perfectly safe. There's no trace of life in these bodies. They've auto-destructed. Give the information to Lord Kess. Auto-destructed. Yet I still sense the presence of that other brain. Put a brain lock on her and set her free. She will be our weapon. Return aboard. with it, Professor Morey. Thanks to Sean and Bridget, with those pills of theirs that made everybody look dead, we fooled them. They went away because they thought we were dead, but those creatures aren't human. They're androids. I saw the evidence with my own eyes. One of them broke in two, and he was all filled with gears and wires and electronic stuff. So they're androids. That means life is relatively rare on their world. Norman has succeeded in getting hold of one of their weapons. I feel sure that if I analyze it, I could make copies of it and even find a lead to the secret of anti -enderia. Back to the lab, then, and get on with it. Right. Come on, Richard. I, too, have a little surprise for the invaders. If it works, it may be the answer to our problems. Now I have to concentrate. <laughs> Section one. All clear, sir. Section two. All clear, sir. Someone is preventing our lift off with a telepathic net. It's quite incredible. To find such a brain on our planet at this stage of evolution. Can't believe it. discovered an incredible thing here. One of these Earth people has a mental force similar to ours. After making our collection of samples, I prepared for departure, but a telepathic net is keeping me blocked on the ground. Erase his mind and return. Pity. What an opportunity to dominate the galaxy. If we sold slaves like this, we could destroy our competition and control the entire market. With one, how? 
analyzing his mental powers. I could construct a brain pattern and imprint it on similar brains. As soon as the ships arrive, I'll send you some samples. All right, go ahead. Thank you both. Set for generating units, sir. What were our losses? 18 seriously damaged, considering large number of slaves collected. Minimum required reduplicates is 50. reaction, see? It works at last. Yes. It's turning into a mass of molecules. <gasps> it's anti-enderium. You're right. <gasps> it's anti-enderium. <Yeah>. Hooray! <laughs> we done it at last. <laughs> that moon reminds me of the time when you and I used to coo like doves the way Tilt and Tilly are doing right now. Okay, okay, forget it. Who gave you that? Your toy soldier? That's none of your business. Oh, the anti enderium It's unstable. Another failure. We don't have a hope. You don't give the impression that you're really very worried about all this. Hmm? You know something? I've never stopped thinking about you in all these years, Irene. Let's have a look at the laboratory. All right, whatever you say. Yes, but this damp air makes me feel a bit rusty. That's all in your mind. You found the correct path, at least. Sure. The only trouble is, if we can't make the anti enderium stable, it will kill us. <laughs> Keep your chin up, Bridget. I was so happy. I thought we'd done it at last. What was all that noise? How's a guy supposed to sleep in this joint? Ah, I see you've been playing with fireworks again. We've had a very serious... These second. flesh and blood creatures certainly go at things the hard way. You're right. They manage to discover anti enderium then start shorting their circuits because they can't make the compound stable. But any compound can be made stable. Even a pocket calculator knows that. Why don't we try to do it? You go ahead. I was never very well programmed in chemistry. All right, we'll do a quick spectrographic analysis, and then we just have to raise the critical temperature by adding a little pinch of this. Are you sure it will work? If not, we'll all go together. Hey, those two robots, look what they're doing. Oh, my God. They're going to kill us all. Hit the dirt oh. undercover. Oh. Keep your heads down, man. You see, less than 1% antimony and the compound has become stable. Oh, Tilt, you're so clever. I would have tried to do it with the inverse infinity ratio. He's done it with antimony. He's found the answer. It doesn't explode. Tilt is an exception. The anti is time. stable? Splendid work. Now there's a chance for us. My compliment. <laughs> hey, keep your hands to yourself. That was great work, kids. I'm really proud of you. Terrific. <laughs> I can understand your enthusiasm. It's more than justified. And my compliments to our robot researchers, too. <laughs> but now we must start to prepare a plan for the destruction of the alien enemy. Before we can accomplish this, we must possess a large quantity of anti enderium which Sean and Bridget can synthesize tonight, all ready for Holly to bring out to the base. But they'll arrest me. They'll give you a medal, I'll bet. <laughs>
We can't manage to fit out more than five space fighters. That's the most our technicians will have time to prepare. That'll be enough, provided we're able to utilize the surprise factor. Right now, you'd better get some rest. You'll have to be in top form tomorrow. We'll attack as soon as the ships are fitted out. We've got to sound the alarm. Wake everybody up. Wait a minute. That reminds me. Now I remember why we wanted to commit suicide. All right. Let's hear it. Not that I have much faith in your memory anymore. <laughs> anyway, we wanted to commit suicide because we could never go to sleep. I knew it. What a silly idea. I've never felt the slightest desire to go to sleep. It's just a waste of time. No, it isn't. I remember that you wanted to sleep so you could dream about me. And you persuaded me that we should commit suicide because if you couldn't dream about me, your whole life had no meaning. And I wanted to dream about you, that's what... I'm going back to the base. The attack is set for tomorrow morning. With only five ships, it's a hopeless mission. Lieutenant Carrera, the aliens have captured Professor Mori. What? I got sidetracked and forgot to sound the alarm. Sound the alarm? Why? What's wrong? Tilt just said that the aliens have captured Professor Mori. And Irene, too. She was acting real funny, like she was hypnotized and just trailing after them. They'll be in that ship. Come on, let's go. One moment, everyone. What are you going to fight them with? Your fists and your feet? Come to the laboratory and get your weapons. I've treated your old space suits with a flexible alloy made of endurium. I've also made a number of swords similar to the ones the aliens use, but better. Look at that chest. With these, all you have to do is touch the androids and they'll be irreparably damaged. You've done a great job, Sean. Just like Charles Atlas. <laughs> when he was just a frail weakling. What's that? The hero's death. I had to challenge you to a duel for that. Come on, make it snappy. We have to hurry. Why did you want to start out alone? We should have waited for the others. The aliens are taking the professor aboard their spaceship. We have to do something. Yeah, we do. Like run away. Get out of here. I'm frightened. There's nothing to be afraid of. They're not programmed to recognize us. They can't even see us. Well, this one must have the wrong program. So long. No, hold on, Tilly. Where are you going? Wait. Ah, uh, these robot women. You let the attend. 
Here, take this. All right, but... What? What's happening? Are you all right? Something's happened to Tilly. I've lost psycho contact with her. Whenever this occurs, all my programs zero out, and I can't move anymore. Wait here. I have no choice. here for? Why don't we attack? Calm down. We got here too late. There's no way for us to get inside the ship now. Unless, of course, someone inside opens the hatch. But Irene's in there. She might be in danger. Tilly is our only hope. If we manage to reactivate her, she can put us in contact with Tilt. Norman, you're the only one who knows how robots operate. There's nothing to worry about. I'll put it right in the flesh. But why don't we attack right away? Don't you understand? We have to wait. Didn't you hear? Of course. Loud and clear. Uncle. Uncle. Wake up, Uncle. Where are we? The aliens kidnapped you and brought you to their spaceship. Oh. We have to get out of here. Come on. I don't know if I can make it. How did it ever happen? I'll explain later. Come on. You are connected to Android Captain of Cargo Fleet in Arrival, Lord Kess. Prepare stowage space. You'll probably need accommodation for over one million slaves. Let me know when you're ready to load. We will follow your orders. There. Gilles. That's it. Gilles, where are you? She was. <laughs> where are you, Gilles? Let's get her back. Gilles. There you go. Good girl. Come on, everybody. Quick. Irene and the professor are in here. Hurry. Here we are, Tilt. We're coming. So the instruments show native activity outside the vessel. Follow order 24B. Destroy natives. Use nucleonic ray. Wait outside, Tilly. Hurry, everyone. Inside, quick. Come on, hurry. Something strange here, sir. The natives seem to have gone now. Hurry, Uncle. You must try hard. We have to get to the exit. Come on. You go ahead, Irene. I can't go any further. Huh? Uncle! humans have succeeded in entering our vessel armed with Indirium swords. We need reinforcements. I'll deal with it at once. Oh. Oh. Look out, Uncle! Professor Mori! Professor! More natives have entered. I've sealed off the slave compartment, sir. Yeah! <laughs> 
Are you all right, Professor? We must get out of here. We're in danger. They can't hold out much longer. Delicate these androids, huh? Let's go before some more arrive. Ha! Professor Mori, you're safe, thank goodness. But where's Irene? They've locked her in that room there. See if you can get her out. I just can't manage it. Poor deluded fools. I'll teach you to rebel against your new master. You will all die in atrocious agony. I can feel that mind again. Do what you can, Derek. I have to get away. Get him out of here, quick. The temperature's rising rapidly. Quick, quick, head for the door, everyone, or we'll all be burned alive. Retreat! Thank goodness we're together again, Tilt. Irene! 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 Can you hear me? Irene, do you feel my mind? Yes. I can sense that you do. Now relax. Drive all thought from your mind. Concentrate. Concentrate. Because if we unite our mental energy, we may be able to open the door. The controls here operate on telepathic command. Think strongly along with me. Open. 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 Ready to lift off. They've started the reactors. Irene and I will go back to the laboratory. Perhaps we can be of some use there. Come along. Tilt and Tilly, come with us. Let's go. Jacob. Where's Norman? Hey, get away from the ship. I just made it, Hunter. You sure did. Look at her go. She's huge. Gigantic. Quick, we gotta go after her and the fighters. To the base. Ooh. Commander, Commander. Our hyper radar is signaling the approach of a fleet of alien vessels. The computer has analyzed their course, and they are heading for a rendezvous with a flying saucer. Did you hear that, Flanagan? There are more aliens. Let's get the first bunch now. We'll get rid of them before their friends come and help. Halt! I'm Lieutenant Carrera. I order you to let us pass. My men and I have to launch a fighter attack at once on the alien vessel. And I order you to follow me. You're under arrest. Arrest? Not before I speak with Commander Barr. Impossible. At the moment, Commander Barr is on a mission. <coughs> Quick, 
We haven't got a second to lose. I have 16 cargo vessels with me. There are native fighters on our screens. I'm awaiting your instructions. Get ready to attack. There are just two. And they can't be dangerous. The planet is an L2. They're only barbarians. They have no weapons against Enderium. Destroy them. Flanagan, the anti-Enderium doesn't help us at all. They're traveling at such a high velocity that our shots don't even reach them. What do you think we should do now, Commander? I suggest we return to the station. I'll try one more attack. If it fails, we'll go back to base. Matrix for attack outline 1820. Attack potential two. Very good, sir. Follow it. Look out, Commander. You've got one on your tail. Destroy it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mars been hit. Flanagan and Barr have been hit. Now, it's up to us, and it'll be tough. Let me go ahead, Dirk. I want to avenge my commander. <laughs> Hollywood. Okay, go ahead. It's suicide, Dirk. We'll never manage to do it. Their velocity is superior to ours. They're going into battle. We must do something to help them, or they don't have a chance. Of course, there's one way I might help out. All of the aliens are concentrated in Sector M. If I could get my concentration back again, I think I could manage to interfere with their power drives and slow down their propulsor engines, putting our fleet on an equal footing with the aliens, but only for a minute. Straight ahead. Attention, please. This is base calling. You can get at the enemy now. Professor Mori is slowing down their drive system with telepathy. Bridget, there's another formation of aliens on your tail. Holly, there are two more beside you. I got their range. I'm right on top of them. They're all mine. Look out! You're going too far! Sean. Where is he? I can't locate him, Bridget. Don't you worry. I'll take care of it. I got him, Sean. You see that? Look out, everyone. There are more coming. Watch 
chance you don't hit the craft with the prisoners. We'll have to try to force it to land. Holly, be careful. There's one after you. I'll force you to land, you bastards. We must retreat, sir. We only have two craft left. Sacrifice them. Crash dive into those native fighters. Yes, Lord Kess. Look out, Holly! There are two of them homing in on you. I've been hit! This is Holly. Holly here! I've been hit! They're following me! Hold tight, Holly! I'm on my way! Even in the great days of Hollywood, no movie star ever died so heroically. Sean, Bridget, they're all yours. Okay, Dirk, we'll follow them. Sean, they're out distancing us. We'll have to increase velocity. the remaining saucers here, but I don't see you on the radar. Where are you? We're right on his tail, Dirk. We won't give up if he goes to the end of the universe. everything about that from my uncle. Oh, Irene. <laughs> I... I couldn't hypnotize you. Honest. Mm. You already have. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. mm. Tilly. I finally remembered why we wanted to commit suicide. Really, Tilt? Yes, because you could never prove your love by going all the way with me. That's right. Now I remember too. But what do we do now? Commit suicide again? But there's no need. I can make some little design changes, adjust a few details, and you can prove your love like any other people. <laughs> Simple. Lord Kess of Cobor is offering... Sol 3 today. I hardly need say that this is a remarkable opportunity. A planet teeming with every sort of life. Animal life, plant life, and human life. Slaves of every color. Ten billion slaves, all strong and healthy. Like these two samples Kess of Kobo has brought along with him. One hundred million credits. Two hundred million. My lords, this planet is unique. Therefore, the starting price is 300 million credits. It's worth more than that. Over 10 billion human slaves just waiting until they're captured. 600 million credits. Mm. 600 million credits. Lord Gar of Torquil has made a generous offer. A very generous offer. I concede ownership of Sol 3. I hope you enjoy it. You get 50%. You two swindlers. But what can you do with all that money? The agreement was 50% plus the prisoners. That's for all that money. 
I think I'd like to get a nice little planet of our own. Ladies and gentlemen, the orchestra.